I'm Alexis Ohanian. I've started startups, invested in them, and met amazing people using the internet to change the world. Our generation has an opportunity unlike any other. We can create small empires without anyone's permission. The internet is a global platform. A company that started in the Netherlands is now headquartered here on Park Avenue. Now this is not a street where you'd expect to find a startup revolutionizing manufacturing, but that's exactly what Shapeways is doing. Welcome. Welcome Pleasure. to Shapeways. Shapeways is a 3D printing community and marketplace. So anyone can go to our website, you can look at the crazy designs, the beautiful designs that our community has created. Over 600,000 of them. You can customize lots of them uh, by just clicking, putting in your initials, you know, changing the shape a little bit, really easy. And then if you are into 3D software or you want to learn 3D software, and there's plenty of that even for free these days, you can design your own thing and then upload it to our site and you can see what it would cost. You can have it made by us in all kinds of different materials from plastics to metal to silver, um, gold-plated brass now, you know, all kinds of materials and then you get it at home. You get your special product made just for you um, like a few weeks later. Now, so just to be clear, I could have a sad Keanu in gold-plated brass? Yes, you could. Wow. I couldn't get out of my head the sad Keanu meme. Oh, and yeah. was going around, and yeah. uh, and I don't know if you've seen this, but Back in I, the day. I, I had to bring this. What's this? Too. That's you. That's your sad Keanu meme. Oh my God! This uh, this is a like happy period for all of us. We were I know on cloud nine, but anyway, finally I have him in the palm of my hand. <laughs> I had to say I that. We originally started in the Netherlands, in Eindhoven. To give it some perspective, Eindhoven actually was a very small town that grew really quickly because Philips built big factories there and they, they built the city with, with workers. And then everything moved out to, to Asia and Eastern Europe. When we spun out of Philips, which actually was our uh, starting ground, um, we went into a, an office that had some place to do some manufacturing. And at the same time, we opened our, our main office here in Manhattan. So here we build a great team of like marketers, product people and engineers and back in Eindhoven we had a supply chain team and we had a, a customer support team and we were, we were really eager to learn more about 3D printing because at that time we, were, we outsourced everything so we bought our first 3D printer there. This was in um, late 2010 and um, so we started to learn about it and pretty, pretty soon we, we figured out that we could do this really well. All right, so this is the entrance? Yes. Am I allowed to just go in? Absolutely. You lead the way. No, we're pretty we're pretty open here. And so I notice you can't go too far without seeing some what are presumably Shapeways kind of yes, uh, creations. Yes, pretty much everything you, it's safe to assume we made. So this is, I believe, St. Basil's Cathedral in Moscow? Yes, in, I, in full color sandstone. Roughly how long does this entire manufacturing process take? Do you have any, any sense? Yeah, so we, we print actually in a large print tray. Mm -hmm. So we don't print one thing at a time, we print many things in a large tray at a given time. Okay. And so we say for those trays to be printed and then for the, the breakout and for all the powder to be swept away, it's typically about nine hours yeah. for a full bed. Wow, that's amazing. It feels like sandstone. I don't know, it's, it's, it's definitely heavy. This is substantial. I kind of want to flip it over and look underneath. Can we see what that looks like on the inside? Mm -hmm. Wow. It's like a little game of Tetris. So moving in here, see our fabulous management team. As you can tell, they sit in the middle of it with all of us, yeah. which is the beauty of it. And you have the brass knuckles. So you're yeah, clearly the, the enforcer. Brass, and now I actually have the brass pizza cutter. That's genius. It's a Mario Mobius oh. and a Bacon Mobius. That's amazing. How, yeah. Bacon, how do people come up with this stuff? Like, that's the great question. That's, that's the what's magic so incredible of about, our, about so, our customers. That's the magic of our mind. Let me throw this at you. Now, 3D printing can be done with a lot of materials. Why not a Mobius bacon made out of bacon? Right. Can we, are we there with 3D food printing technology? We're not, no, we're not no, there yet? It's happened yet. Uh, right. People are flirting with it. I heard yeah. there are some burrito makers. Yeah, yeah. burrito makers? But not bacon Why are they going yet. to burritos when you could just have bacon? Just, you gotta baby step it. You can't, that's not a minimum viable product. Bacon yeah. is minimum viable product. 
you guys were inside this massive Dutch company and, mm -hmm. and your startup life, it wasn't you quitting your job. It wasn't you, you know, graduating from college. This was you like taking this thing out of a massive company and starting something. How did that come about? I've always been part of startups. The first one actually was a company that published the first free 3D software called Blender. So that was one of the reasons why I got really excited about 3D printing. But when I, I got the idea, I mean, where do you get money in Eindhoven? There is not a big uh, angel investor scene. There are no VCs and there are banks, but hey, banks don't take risks. They give you money when you don't need it typically. Yeah. <laughs> um, so um, yeah, how do you get money? And the friend who introduced me to 3D printing, he was actually working uh, on the, in Philips uh, as a manager on the Lifestyle Incubator Board. And uh, he said, why don't you pitch to us? So actually what I did is I quit a startup I was a CTO at, pitched for them and joined Philips to start a company, which is kind a of weird. A company within a company. Yes, because Philips at the time had three incubators focused on their core domains. Yeah. One of them was the Lifestyle Incubator. And within the Lifestyle Incubator, they felt this made total sense. Yeah. And since the amounts I was asking for, for them were reasonable, uh, maybe even small, uh, they said, well, let's give this guy a shot. So this is product and design maintaining the front end of everything. And here are the geniuses behind the back end of everything. So this is our whole glorious development team, whom we love deeply. Yeah, you guys can say hi. Hi, glorious development team. Hi. I presume this is the most popular thing on Shapeways right now? You would have think so, but yeah. evidently it's not. I don't know these people. Well, they're gonna, after they see this, they're going to know whoever created this Grumpy Cat bust is uh, going to be doing very well after the show airs. It's fantastic. Man, what, why, why are you working here at Shapeways? Working what, here at Shapeways? What were you doing before this? Uh, before this, I've had a ton of different jobs. I worked in, for finance, I worked in government contracting, and I worked in other startups. And uh, I came to Shapeways just over a year ago, and uh, I was interviewing a bunch of different places, and it was just like, it seemed to be the most fun, it seemed to be the most motivated group of engineers working on the coolest technology that I'd seen mm -hmm. in a completely emerging sector. So like, all of those things just came together. It was like, yeah, this is kind of a no-brainer. All right, so let's say, and I, I've got a couple of friends who have been in are in this situation right now. And they're, they're, they're good at the work that they do, they just feel like I don't know, government contract work isn't exactly the most stimulating. What do you tell them who are watching this right now and basically see where you work right now, see the folks you work with and work for and, and go like, I want your job, man. Yeah, I don't know, it's just we have more fun. We have yeah. more fun. We do. You get to work on a product that you really believe in, and a lot of folks who are doing like the bigger businesses do work on products they believe in. But it's you're so close to the end result. Like if you work in a government contract, at least in my experience, you know you're working on a huge aircraft carrier or a big fighter plane. It's like, well, that's big, but I don't. I own a very small piece of it. Here, you're in the whole process from start to finish, from complete ideation of ideas and products to actually implementation, building them, and then you get to hold something like this in your hand at the end yeah. of the day. So it's like you have real, tangible results that come out of all the work that you put into it. So I think, for me anyway, that's really, really rewarding. We have our, our marketing team is over here. These are the materials geniuses, as we refer to them. Hello. Oh, so you're the guys I have to talk to about the bacon Mobius strips made out of bacon. I guess so. Okay. Do we have the technology for that yet in 3D printing land? Not quite. I mean, people are printing um, like human organs for replacement. So, like, if you were to lose right. an ear, um, they can do like cell deposition yeah. and print your ear. So, hypothetically, you could. It seems like if they can make an ear, belly, fat cells, you could make bacon. And yeah, you should be able to. It'd be really expensive, but but worth it. Maybe. If I opened a Shapeway store and made bacon Mobius strips out of bacon, would you buy one? Yeah. Sure. What, what if it were a thousand dollars? Why not? Yes, this is a business. Shapeways pegged the factory of the future. So all of this stuff came out of a printer. Wow. Um, yeah. Shape, shape, so much of what you guys do is, is sort of atypical mm -hmm. for startups today. When it came to fundraising back in the day, you all were probably met with a lot of skepticism because it's one thing to build a marketplace, it's another thing uh, to sort of uh, use 3D printing modeling technology to help let people create and share all that stuff. All that stuff jibes with what investors expect. As soon as you also mention, hey, we're going to manufacture and ship this stuff too, it stops looking like a traditional ones and zeros kind of startup because you're dealing with stuff now. You clearly have great investors on board now, Andreessen Horowitz, Union Square Ventures. How, how did that, how did you sell that? How did you convince them to, to get on board? 
Well, you're right, it was tough, especially in the beginning. And it was even tougher still, because if it was the word manufacturing, maybe I didn't scare them that much in the beginning. But I wasn't saying manufacturing, I was saying 3D printing. And people went like, what is that? Most investors weren't aware. Most people, I mean, when I got in touch in 2006 with the technology, I went like, what is this? And I'm pretty tech savvy. There was really, really unknown. So we were indeed building this company and we were saying, well, we manufacture the physical stuff using 3D printers. And you know, people just didn't get it. And they saw more risks than rewards probably. So there was a lot of skepticism until I, um, I met Albert at, uh, at Union Square Ventures. And um, he said, yo, this is great. He has, a, in his early days, I think, uh, some, some background uh, in manufacturing. So um, he, he said, this is great. We, we should do this. And uh, one led to the other, and here we are. Hello. Hi, Alexis. Yes. Hi. Nice Pleasure. You. Thank you very Hi. much for having me. So this is where all the actual magic happens. You guys take random ideas from people on the internet and make them into real physical Physical things. objects, yes. We really make people's ideas come to life. So I've got this great idea. I want to create a Mobius strip of bacon. All right? <laughs> so I've, I've, yes. I've uploaded the model. I'm really yeah. proud of it. It's going to be great. Now we go to the, the first stage of the, the planning? Yes, we go to the planning of the, of the machines. There, we have a team of engineers. They gather all the models that come on every single day. They uh, double check them for printability. What they do is they basically have a 3D version of the, of the inside of the printer. And they try to put as many products as they can, try to fit it in one, to, in, in one print build. And this is a human digitally packing all these 3D objects. It's a, com it's a combination of okay. a couple of uh, smart uh, algorithms and quite a few smart people. Mm -hmm. And um, This is like the ultimate Tetris game. We have a big community in Europe, also because we started there. I mean, the Dutch community is strong. But we started, you know, we already had lots of customers in the United States. One of the reasons we had our main office here. And we wondered, it doesn't make sense to make stuff in Europe and then ship it to the United States, right? If we can build and manufacture and actually have a factory in Eindhoven, what everybody thinks is crazy because everything left there, why not build a factory here in New York? To have a factory close to the main office, of course, makes sense because then, you know, everybody can work together and learn faster. So we started to look around and, uh, you know, we saw a lot of old factories that were empty and not used for a long time. And then uh, we found this, uh, this great place in Long Island City that was perfect for us. Not too large, not too small, reasonable rent. And, uh, you know, we said, let's do it. Oh boy. Uh, wow. So uh, this is where the actual magic happens. Uh, the real shape waste magic. We got a whole set of printers here lined up. Can I look? Yes, you can have a look. It's okay. I don't know, but my parents used to tell me not to stare directly into the microwave, which I think was just hogwash, but they were paranoid and scared of microwave. All right, so this is in the middle of a build right now. Yes. And presumably, I, if I sat here long enough, I would see my hypothetical bacon strip Mobius being created right before my eyes. Yes, yes. This is, uh, this is basically just a very hot oven. And it heats plastic just below the melting temperature. And at the moment that the laser shines across the tray, across the platform, it, it centers the pieces of the plastic together. So it basically does it layer by layer by layers. And about 24 hours later, you have a completely uh, ready print. So this is a 24-7 operation. Yeah. It's easy for me to think about, you know, having a 24-7 business when it's just yeah. a website. You know, the website yeah. goes down, you know, it's a pain, you have to solve it. Yeah. But it's not like a giant machine with stuff. How do you think about running a business that is as digital as it is physical? I really like it, personally. I mean, this is why I'm part of Shapeways. It's just really great to be able to make something that people like physically will hold in their hands, and especially one, if it's their own creation, what they've made. And you know, from a business perspective, it brings a whole lot of uh, interesting challenges and, uh, and exciting things that you can do. I mean, we're building a factory here. I mean, yeah. what yeah. more fun can you have? I feel like everyone in 3D printing, in that industry, is living like five years in the future. You almost kind of have to because you have to believe in a vision that hasn't yet arrived, but seems imminent. I mean, to some extent, every founder does, but I feel like especially 3D printing. You know, when you started this business only a few years ago, what was the most impressive, if, if you understand where I'm coming from, like impressive thing that could be printed? And what is it today? And then what do you expect it to be two or three more years from now? 
It's less what the machines can do, mm -hmm. because what the machines can do today is not wildly different from what they huh. could do five years ago. Yeah. But it's what people can come up with. The first things that we saw were really basic shapes. We need to get our heads around what is possible with 3D printing more than that the technology is holding us back. Sure, there are lots of limitations. I mean, I'm not going to say it's, it's perfect yet, but if you're a designer, especially if you're a product designer, what you get taught in schools is what people tell me, is that you need to design for manufacturing. Regular manufacturing, mass manufacturing, has a lot of limitations. You need to think about a lot of things. And quite a few of those limitations do not apply for 3D printing. But since if you're trained to think about those limitations all the time, you don't like to break those rules. And that's actually what's happening now. People start to realize, oh, wait a minute, all the things that I couldn't do, I can now do. And I think that is where, you know, the complexity of the things, the daring of our designers, of our community is growing and growing and growing. And sometimes that drives us mad because they come up with things that are so on the edge of what the machines can do. But um, it's, I think, still a lot of stuff that you can do conceptually with 3D printing is not done yet. When you were a kid and you were in elementary school and you were asked to write a letter to like yourself as an adult talking about what you wanted to be when you grew up, was it designing cufflinks as one of the most successful businesses powered by Shapeways? <laughs> Absolutely not. Because if it was, that would be awesome. No, that would no, be so precious and so cool. Sorry, we are so how, definitely how you, unintentional. So um, how did this happen? Started as friends going out for drinks, but then quickly realized we all had this shared frustration of just like so much crap in the world, so much stuff that was not good quality. It's so many things that were so disposable. Um, and we were like, we don't want that. We, we, we thought back to you know, the times where like, you had an item, you had a product, you had a, a piece. Um, that then you would give to your son, that they would pass along, and, and these like elements of family heirlooms, and we kind of just had this strong urge that like those pieces were like disappearing somehow. And that's where like Shapeways was snug right there, and we we're like, oh wait, we can just do this and upload something and have something in our hands in four weeks. Yeah. Sure, let's do it. So honestly, we had three products, put it up on a Shopify site. Um, luckily, it got picked up by Swiss Miss, Wired, Engadget, Gizmodo, um, and then a, a slew of orders came in, and then we were a company instantly. I love this notion of all these artists and designers sort of doing things without permission and just creating. Uh, not long after, I think, the release of the original iPad, mm -hmm. you all had designers manufacturing cases within days. Yep. Is that right? Yep. Presumably, you know, they didn't go to Apple for permission for this. They were just making useful cases for these devices on Shapeways. I think it was on a Friday in April somewhere. And um, on Monday, we saw an iPad case pop up uh, on Shapeways. This guy you know, bought the thing, measured it. Four days later, he had his design ready for a back uh, cover of an iPad. In four days, you go from an idea to a product that you can sell as an individual. That is almost impossible without a platform like Shapeways. We like to say it's our, our playground for ideas. It's our little sandbox where we kind of sketch around, do the things we like of making new things and testing them out. And we still all have our day jobs. Really? Um, so this is just great. Yeah, the costs have just completely collapsed. And, and then also it's really freeing. Um, because of that, like as a designer and as a creator, you're like, you're not sitting here and having that check of like, oh, I made this thing, but I don't think it's gonna sell. It's like it doesn't really matter. So if anyone's out there, it's just it's really just go and learn. Tell them right. <laughs> but just, just go ahead and, and go for it. And yeah. the tools are out there, and the education's out there. There's so many tutorials, different things like that. So many like so much information out there that's really just about like your time and energy and learning the tools and then. Um, just committing to it. What do you say to skeptics? What do you say to people who look at that and just say, this isn't important, these are trinkets, these are just little things, like, they're toys. What do you say to them? You know, if you think about the fact that we see more and more people uh, printing their engagement rings or their, their wedding rings on Shapeways and making them and designing them themselves, um, I don't think that those things are trinkets to those people. They're really important things. They're really important in their lives. And the first time I heard it, I was like blown away. I, you're doing this on Shapeways? You gotta be kidding. You're not going to a jeweler? And then I realized, well, hang on. This is such a, a personal event in someone's life. Yeah. Buying something that I mean, someone else can also buy isn't good enough for, for them. 
they want to make something, they want to design something and then give it away that is truly personal to them and they can unleash their own creativity. So then I understood, but so that's not trinkets by a long shot. What happens here is when you have a tray, we take them out of the printer. This is how it comes out of the printer. And um, we've all done it this morning already. So unfortunately, I cannot show you the all actual right. uh, the actual digging, getting it out of the sand. But basically, the tray is cooled down in order by order. Now we put a big tray, we put it on here. Then the platform rises, mm -hmm. and then basically the outside box um, disappears, and the white uh. cake comes out on top of it. So it looks like Han Solo frozen in the carbonite. <laughs> yeah. Basically. Yeah. And yeah. then basically we just really gently, we know where each mold is, yeah. we start digging it away. After the breakout station yeah. and all the molds are cleaned, they actually come here, we put them on these racks. And in the early afternoon, like one tray after another comes in here and then basically wow. uh, we sort it here. It's clearly a very important human process to a lot of this to make sure quality control is so high and, and make sure everyone gets what they are expecting to get. Yeah. Hello. How are you? Hi, I'm Alexis. Alexis, I'm Greg. Nice to meet you. Greg. So nice welcome. You. You're seeing the Thank tail you. end of the process. Right? So uh, you get a bin. This is the UPS label, packing slip, swag, which you're familiar with, and the product itself. <gasps> a dwarven battle axe. Yeah. I don't know the damage per second on it, but we can find that later. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to be sort of hands off with this one. <sighs> um, the first thing you do is you right. take the UPS label, put it, you put it aligned with there you go. I vertical. see what's going on here. You flip, you flip the box oh, like oh, oh. this. Okay, dig right? it. All right, and then? And then you're basically going to assemble one, half two, the box. One, two. You said I was going to do it. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Upside down right here. Yeah, perfect. Right there. Shazam. Shazam. So first thing we want the customer to see is this. Yes. Can I, can I write a little Oh, do you want to write something? Yeah. Okay. What's the DPS watch small empires there right because i don't want to okay. right so Whip. wow so for somebody who's watching this show and is thinking i want this job i want to do this mm -hmm. what you know and, and let's say they are god let's say they're in the massive company that doesn't have any kind of incubation program or, or maybe it does it doesn't matter but let, let's say they are doing the nine to five thing or maybe they're a college student what do you tell them what do you tell her to, to end up like you well I think one of the most important traits is that you you don't listen to the word no uh, when I started Shapeways um, we had some pretty big uh, technology challenges if you upload a file to us how do I know I can print it right how do I even know it's a file that a printer would recognize how big is it what would it cost? So I went around the corner and um, I asked quite a few very, very smart uh, technology people, can you build me something that helps me understand whether it is printable and can help me fix it if it isn't and what it would cost, etc. And they said, wow, that is, that is really hard. It's actually almost impossible. And uh, if we were to build this, I mean, this was a big company and they said, wow, this might cost you 10 to 20 million and maybe three years. And I go like, Nothing costs 10 to 20 million and nothing takes three years. So I didn't hear that. So I kept looking and I found these great guys in, in, in Seattle. Um, and um, Alan Hudson uh, um, was the CEO of that uh, company and he's now working for us. Um, and he said, oh, yeah, I can do this in three months. And I'm like, yeah, that sounds, everything can be done in three months. Yeah. So, you know, don't listen to no. If you hear no, go somewhere else. Open source software rips down the barriers to entry for anyone who wants to build a business using code. Shapeways has leveled the playing field for anyone who wants to design and make things. And it's all happening right here in this building in New York City. Said it can't be done. Can't make a bacon mobia strip. All right, fine. So we can do about that. Can't make a bacon mobia strip. Don't take no for an answer. That's just what Pete said. So I'm not gonna take no for an answer. Right, I'll just put this here. It's still beta, yeah. but delicious. Um, I just need my thousand dollars now. My work here is done. 